Hey guys, it's Days Dave back again. I'm here to talk about the Retro Engine Sigma once again. Um, so a lot of people are having problems with the stock OS that's installed on it. It's actually a version of Retro Orange Pi that was ripped off from the developers. Uh, so we're going to install the regular version of Orange Pi Lite. Uh, and it's going to solve a lot of your problems. Wi-Fi issues, uh, ROM transferring, you name it, it's in there. Um, basically all Doyoto did was throw some weird splash screens on there, add some of their own music, and add a script that allows the P1 and P2 buttons on the system. Their uh, P1 is stock, it it's, turns it off, P2 I haven't tried. Uh, but anyway, installing Orange Pi Lite allows the system to be more open, it also the Super Nintendo emulator will work. So anyway, hope you enjoy the video. Um, if you do, subscribe, like, leave a comment, something to let me know you're out there. Thanks for watching. Here we go. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to RetroOrangePie.org. There'll be a link down below. Um, you scroll down to the bottom here. It shows you exactly what you're getting. Uh, this is exactly what was on the Retro Engine software. And then download RetroOrangePie 3.0.1. Orange Pi Lite is the one you're looking for. So you select this and then hit here to download. Now I already have a copy. Don't want to bog up their servers. So I'll just exit that. Uh, afterwards you're going to be greeted with this file. RetroOrangePyLite.tar.gc Now Windows has some problems unpacking these. Um, you're going to want a program called 7-Zip. So get 7-Zip. Uh, then you'll be greeted with this one. OrangePyLite.tar in a separate folder and then finally after unpacking that dot tar you're gonna have orange pie light dot img afterwards you open up etcher link down below and then hit orange pie light dot img open it's gonna automatically select your micro SD card uh, so obviously you're gonna to want to have to your micro SD card installed with the uh, micro SD USB 2.0 thumb drive that they supplied with the Retro Engine Sigma. Uh, then you're going to want to hit flash. Now flashing these takes a few minutes, probably about 10-15 minutes in total. Um, so I will be back once it is done. So now that Etcher has finally finished flashing my micro SD card, now we pop it back into the back of the Retro Engine Sigma. and reinsert the power cable. And now we'll see where it goes. The Sigma immediately recognizes it and it begins to install. Very evocative of the Commodore VIC-20, isn't it? Flashing lights, slow loading screen. Great. So you can see that what Retro Engine did was just put on a different screen. And added that awful guitar riff. What was with that? Please wait. Installing Retro Orange Pi 3.0. This will just take a minute. After that, it'll boot straight into the operating system with no need for your phone, connecting any weird Wi-Fi. It just does it automatically. Just requires a little bit of patience. Here we go. And it is booting back up.
Retro Orange Pie 3.0, right there on the screen. And you get this excellent PlayStation 1 startup sound instead of the awful guitar riff. Now it's going to boot into Retro Orange Pi. It's going to tell us that our joypad is connected. I am still using the Retro Engine controller. Uh, gamepad detected. Hold a button. So it's very simple. Up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y. Left, bottom actually means the tr top left trigger. Same thing with the right and same thing with the left top and right top. Left thumb is down, right thumb down, up, down, left, right on the left analog, up, down, left, right on the right analog, and then press A if you're using the Super Nintendo kind of setup, and then it boots straight in. No need for your phone, no need for any funny business. Um, some people expressed some worry that the games that were promised with the Retro, en or Retro Engine Sigma would be missing after this install. As a matter of fact, they are still there. You scroll over to ports, press B, and they are all still right here. Uh, presumably they work even better now. And you can see your emulators, these are just they're right here. Nothing left to do except for turn on the network. If you do, going over to RetroPie. Scroll down to Retro Orange Pi Wi-Fi, press B. For this, you will need a keyboard. On that end, I'm using the keyboard wired. Plug it straight into the Retro Engine. Activate a connection. Connecting. Simple. After that, press escape on the keyboard. Now you can unplug this keyboard, plug it back into your PC. And you're all set. It should now show up in your network discovery, in your PC or Mac, uh, for you to drag and drop ROMs straight onto it just like the Raspberry Pi system. Hope you enjoyed this video. Take it easy.